deep one for the end zone. Palin is down there. Oh, he got it! He got it! He got it! He got it! No! Not possible! Not possible! We're going to talk about sports. You see, history is full of sports leagues that tried and failed to become the next big thing. Does anyone remember the XFL? Or what about Slam Ball, the basketball league that was actually played on trampoline? Way up high! Boom! Shot the lock was head was a bubble Yes, that really happened. But obviously, it never quite caught on. It's not easy to break through to the mainstream. But nevertheless, the search continues for a new kind of competitive entertainment that millions of people will actually rearrange their lives to watch and to follow. I'm America's digital pro, Kim Commando. And in this Commando On Demand podcast, we're going to take a close look at a growing sport that just might be on its way to becoming this big national pastime. Brought to you in part by our friends at Dreams Time, the world's largest stock photo and video community. The right image anywhere, anytime. Download the most relevant and current images and videos today for only 20 cents each or for free. Visit dreamstime.com. That's D R E A M S T I M E.com today. Now, as anyone who's ever watched the Super Bowl knows, sports are big business. American sports fandom makes millionaires out of players and executives because fans are willing to spend a lot of their free time and their extra cash just cheering on their favorite teams and following the players. Obviously, some of that money comes from ticket and merchandise sales, but a huge amount is in television and streaming deals, the money that networks and sites pay for the right to broadcast games to these huge audiences that will then create huge advertising revenue. The NFL, for example, is right in the middle of a deal that will pull in nearly $40 billion from 2014 to 2022. That money allows for the ever-rising player contracts, bigger and better stadiums, and all the promotion that makes sports such a pervasive part of our culture. And such a lucrative industry is bound to attract imitators who see it and they want to replicate the same model with other types of entertainment. It's a snowball effect. And for the big sports leagues, the snowball just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I watch physically a lot of people play. And then on top of that, any spare time, I have my second monitor while I'm working so I can be always watching someone play. That's Mike Patnode. And his life revolves around watching sports. Well, sort of. It kind of depends on your definition of the word sports. League of Legends, Rocket League, Smash Brothers, Counter-Strike. If you've never heard of these sports, here's a clue. The equipment you need to play them is a handheld controller or maybe a computer keyboard. They're known as eSports, electronic sports, or in other words, we might know them as video games. Now, if you're a regular listener of our podcast, Commando on Demand here, you might remember a story that we brought you last year about a guy by the name of Connor. He was a student attending college on a video gaming scholarship known as an e-athlete. In that episode, which you can find over at commando.com, on iTunes or Google Play, I took a close look at Connor's winding journey toward his dream of becoming a professional video gamer. Today, we're going to focus on the people that make that dream a possibility, the fans of gaming. After all, if nobody actually sat back and watched people play video games or esports, there would be no tournament prizes, no advertisers, no sponsorships, and no professionals. Okay, now back to Mark. I asked him how his fandom started. He's 27 years old now, and remembering the beginning of this obsession took him way back. I probably started playing games around, you know, the age of five, seven, you know, just Super Nintendo, Sega. My parents were supplied every console, and actually one of my friends, he lived right up the street from me, and his parents were very strict, so he always came down and played games, and, you know, whether it was a single player, I'd watch him, he'd watch me, and, like, there was always competition on the line. All these years later, his love for the games and the need to compete, it's never wavered. And these days, he keeps the need to compete with other gamers for himself and for his entire community. He's actually the founder of Main Competitive Gaming. You see, Mark organizes tournaments where the best players in the area actually compete. These are the folks who want to be the best. They come together to test their skills against one another. Now, one particular game has proven especially popular. It's often referred to simply as Smash. Don't worry, I didn't know what it was either. 
I would describe Smash Brothers as what seems like a party game that once you dig a little bit deeper, you realize that it's a really competitive, skilled game that really brings um, some amazing gamers out. That's Super Smash Brothers. This is a fighting game from Nintendo that has been around for more than a decade. And new versions come along with each new Nintendo console. From a distance, it might look like a game for kids. It's got these bright colors and characters that look like cartoons. But this happy, shiny exterior actually hides this intense fighting game that requires lightning-quick reflexes and deep strategic thinking just to master. Your controls would be dashing back and forth, uh, neutral attacks, and then some special attacks, a jump, and then... You can dodge, you can cancel attacks, you can charge them, and you can, you know, have some grabs and stuff like that. It's the kind of game that rewards lots and lots of practice because the gap between just good players and average players and the best players, the elite ones, it's actually pretty huge. You play it for months and months and years, some of the players, and they take it so serious that, you know, watching them play, it's not... It's not that it's not fun, but you can tell that there's more on the line than enjoying what's at hand. At Mark's tournaments, there's a hierarchy of players who compete mercilessly for the top spot. They want to earn these bragging rights and the respect of their fellow gamers. And those that don't win, well, they have the chance to improve by learning from the better players. I see players come here every single day, probably four hours a night, and I've seen them come from really getting their butt whipped every single time they show up to now they haven't lost a match in the last three months for the tournaments and it's just it's incredible to see the devotion that people will put into becoming the best in the community because you get looked up to you get asked the questions of how to get better the best folks in the community aren't just sitting around saying we're the best we're number one they also want to what they call level up the top tier players in this community in maine they look up to professional players, you know, anyone from the New England area that gets to go out to Evo. Okay, here's another term. What's Evo, you ask? Well, if Mark's Smash Brothers League is the peewee football, I want you to think of Evo as the Super Bowl. It happens every July in Las Vegas, Nevada, and it's really huge. It's even broadcast now on ESPN. For Mark and game fans like him, these matches are a total must-see TV, especially when their favorite teams and their favorite players are competing. I know all of them by name for Street Fighter, Smash, some competitive Counter-Strike players and stuff, and, you know, I look up to them and I have, you know, the team that they play on t-shirts and sweatshirts because I like their teams and I like what they represent and do in the esports community. But none of these celebrity video gamers are household names like LeBron James or Serena Williams. When we come right back, we're going to speak to someone who has these great ideas. They want to change all this. So that instead of you just thinking Super Bowl, you're thinking video game bowls. Woohoo! Thanks to Simply Safe, protecting your family is simple. Get 10% off at simplysafechem.com. That's simplysafechem.com. This is pretty crazy. According to a recent report by this market research firm by the name of IHS Market, more and more people than ever are turning to esports. Viewership across all platforms totals more than 6 billion hours in 2016. Isn't that amazing? That's more than five times the amount in 2010. And that number is expected to climb to over 9.3 billion by 2021. If you're an advertiser, this is a demographic you want to reach. And these kind of numbers really catch their attention. And esports advertising sales are projected to nearly quadruple during the next four years. We're talking $280 million in 2016 to over a billion dollars. And that's what attracted my eyes to this whole industry. It's just growing like crazy. And I know you might be sitting back saying, well, come on, Kim, that's not quite NFL money. But at the rate that the competitive video game world is exploding... It's absolutely crazy to think that Super Smash Brothers, or whatever the kids are playing in the 2020s or the 2030s, might someday have a Super Bowl of its very own that the entire world watches. Hmm. 
how big can I get? Well, my answer would be, you know, there is no limit. It's just a matter of us finding new and creative ways to get people involved. That's Samantha. But like most people in the gaming world, she goes by another name publicly. My handle's Persia. I'm a professional commentator and host. Persia has a pretty big job. She is one of the many people responsible for the gaming's current growth. Because a big part of her job is actually bringing in new fans. And once they're there, keeping them totally engaged. We need to appeal to new people who don't really know about us. But we also need to appeal to the people who have been with us and don't make them feel like they don't matter anymore because all we're focusing on is getting new people involved. It can be really tricky trying to find the balance in between talking to people who don't really know and then talking to like your hardcore fan base. Persia's Game of Choice is a fighting game. It's called Marvel vs. Capcom. She hosts a podcast on the game, and she's an in-demand commentator for the game's biggest matches. Yes, we are here. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Top 8. Something that I like to do is just try to highlight something that's fairly basic, but then follow it up with something that's a little bit more in-depth that, you know, our hardcore players might know about. Um, Like, for example, in Marvel, and be like, oh, yeah, you know, when you're blocking, you know, you can push block, and that'll give you some space, but you need to be careful because characters like Doctor Doom can negate push block with their air dash and then stay in your face. It's definitely a tricky balance between all of it, but... The most important thing for me as a commentator is that I'm having fun and that I'm genuinely enjoying what I'm seeing because that's going to come across to the viewers immediately. Okay, remember Evo, the big annual gaming tournament that Mark and his friends in Maine dream about competing at one day? Well, that's just one of the big tournaments that Persia commentates, and it's true. Listening to her talk, you can really tell how much she just genuinely enjoys it. She's excited to be a part of it. The feel of walking into the arena, uh, indescribable almost. <laughs> it's really exciting. And it's also the event that might determine whether esports catches on in a really big way. You see, one hurdle is getting sports fans interested in something that many of them are just not quite ready to consider a sport. EVO 2016, the Street Fighter finals were broadcasted on ESPN. And of course, there's obviously going to be backlash from hardcore sports fans. Why is there a video game on, you know, the screen right now? You know, is this what I pay ESPN for? Whatever, right? But there was this one guy. He posted up, you know, a tweet about it. Oh, I can't believe there's video games on the screen. Oh, outrage. And then literally, like eight minutes later, he posted up, I'm still watching and I can't turn it off. And it's true. Like, you get hooked. Joe knows it. He's got to shake off the pressure. There are a couple of different elements that can help change the minds of the most skeptical sports fans. But first, the spectacle. The production value of Evo was just through the roof. We were in the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. We had a big jumbotron. Stage was in the shape of the Evo logo. Like, it was a grand production. It was beautiful. It was amazing. And I think that's what really makes it feel worth watching, right? For the average person, why would there be so much production value and so much invested into this tournament if it wasn't worth watching? The second element, a really good storyline. For Persia, the story of last year's Evo was a player by the name of L.I. Joe. Yes, round two, Joe to Joe. He's telling us now match point. He was kind of like the star. You know, he didn't win, but his story was amazing. His father was there. You know, they had all the right camera shots, you know, showing the father, showing Joe. You know, it, it was like tears like we're streaming it was crazy and that type of emotion you know if you can evoke that type of emotion out of somebody it's worth watching it's worth you know being interested to see it again so as you can see there's a whole bunch of people involved in esports you have the gaming fans the esports industry folks advertisers sponsors who are all hoping that millions of new viewers tune into this year's evo and they get totally hooked on it And if you're skeptical that you'd ever care about watching competitive video gaming, well, the next time you're flipping through the channels or you're online, you see a Facebook Live or something going on Twitter, and you happen to see an eSports match, maybe you should just sit back and give it a few minutes. You just may get hooked. 
I'm Kim Commando. I actually host the nation's largest radio show about digital lifestyle and technology. I have some 6 million people tuning into my broadcast every week. So I guess that makes me your still digital pro. And you can watch my show, you can listen to my show, and you can find my show on a station near you by heading over to the official homepage of the Kim Commando Show. That's commando.com, K-O-M-A-N-D-O.com. And hey, by the way, if you haven't already, make sure that you get the free commando.com app. It's available for free on iTunes and for all your Android devices. You can find it on Google Play or your favorite podcast player because not only can you get this podcast delivered automatically, but also our other wildly, insanely popular podcast called Tech News This Week. Thanks for listening. Kim Commando is brought to you in part by iDrive. Back up all your devices on just one account. Use promo code Kim for 75% off your first year. iDrive.com. Promo code Kim. Your happily ever after is waiting for you in the Chrysler Pacifica and Pacifica plug-in hybrid. With available all-wheel drive, Pacifica helps handle adverse conditions like magic. And with a plug-in hybrid, it can help your range anxiety disappear. Make your drive even more enchanted in the Chrysler Pacifica. And watch Disney's Disenchanted streaming November 18th, only on Disney+. Plus. Rated PG. Disney Plus subscription required. Must be 18 plus to subscribe. EPA estimated 520 mile total range with a fully charged battery. Actual mileage may vary.